Hi, good morning. Sorry, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no worries. I didn't know you. Yeah, yes, yeah. just uh, just to get a chair. Yes. And uh, and you 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 came in the right time, absolute right time, because I'm 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 going to talk about uh, uh, the differences. Okay. Now I, I just keep talking. Okay. Uh, now uh, I'm talking about the difference between a violin and a fiddle, because this is so important. I have been traveling all over the world, helping people with violins, but not very much with fiddles. Why? Because there are two completely different things. I can only give you a comparison or example, say classical music and folk music. Okay, classical music, if you play in an orchestra, you play Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, or Bach, you have to be precise, you have to be like that. But it's not like a folk music, you can play anything you like because you enjoy it. Like driving a car in the traffic, you must follow the traffic rule, that's classical. Or you ride a horse in the field, you can go anywhere you like. So that's something very different. So if I say I help people with violins, I'm very confident. Because I know exactly the measurements and the standard of and how the sound should be, everything. I worked for 40 years, if not 50 years, you know, of my life. But for fiddles, because I don't know much about fiddles at home myself. When I was in Norway, people asked me to repair Harlem Fiddle. I can't groom if they have sides open or things like that, but people say, tune the sound. <laughs> I said, well, I'm sorry, my God. I don't even play Harlem Fiddle, and I don't even know how to tune them. The tune is different from violin. How can I help them? So this is totally different. So instead of saying, okay, today we will have uh, lots of uh, I don't know if I should call them violin or fiddle. So here, any there's a lot of instruments. Okay, St four stringed instruments will will be here, and uh, it's a challenge for me too. It's also a learning for me process. I must ask uh, the fiddle player, and what this is, and learn from them. So this is not a a, a session today. Is not a workshop that uh, I like all like most of the workshops in the world. I teach. Okay, I have students there. Oh, yeah, this is uh, no. You know, the length is 195 from here to here, from here to here is 328, and this uh, the the the, uh, the height of the bridge is about 35. Something is not like that. Okay, because that I'm confident, I'm qualified, I'm expert, but not in the fiddles. Rather, I would like to listen. I would like to learn from them. Of course, what the handwork I can do if they teach me, if they tell me, say, oh, Daniel, I want a little bit like this. No problem. If I have tools, I, I can do with my hands. But I want to learn from them what they want for the fiddles. So that is a new challenge for me too. So very, very interesting. Okay. Uh, the final thing I want to mention here, because uh, I got another friend here, is that uh, this time I come back to, to Melbourne, to Australia, to Warburton. After 30 years, I'm not prepared at all to do any violin work. Work. I did not even bring one set of my strings here. <laughs> I've been trying carrying strings everywhere, no matter where I go. This is the only time, only time in three years, four years traveling without carrying any of my products. Why? Because Australia is a developed country. Australia is like America, like Japan. You know, like uh, Germany is a developed country. They must have everything. This is what I thought. You know, it's not Peru, it's not uh, Bolivia, it's not Philippines. But to my surprise, I'm sorry to say my friends, the violin is, oh, sorry, it's not a violin, it's a four string instrument in this area. The condition is as primitive, if not any worse, than all those countries. The other day, I met a, a violinist, very good violinist, actually, he's, he's good. I, I must say, he played very well. But he played the cheapest string in the world. I think that string cost maybe one dollar. This Chinese string was not meant to play, because in China, the violin makers make the violin. No, it's not the violin makers, I'm sorry, it's the factories make the violin. Then no! The foreigners, the foreigners will not use their string. So they only make the full steel to put it there look like a string. And this 
very honorable person playing on that string with not bad sound. <laughs> so very surprising. <laughs> okay. He could make ten times better sound if he has a decent strings. But that surprises me that even people here in this country, okay, a bottle of water will cost like two, three dollars in this country, would play one dollar set of violin strings here. It's not that they don't have money. They do. It's not that don't they don't have access. It's not easy for them to get all the information. And all the bowls I've seen here are really the worst quality I ever seen in my life, entire life. I don't even see this bowls this quality when watching China myself. I'm sorry to say this. Pray you you, you pay one hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, you can change your life. You can change the total way of performance just for one hundred, two hundred dollars for a decent bow. Okay, you pay twenty dollars, forty dollars, one set of strings you can use for one year, one year and two years. The whole music life will change. Of course, a rosin. If you get a good rosin, good string, a bow, you invest two total together. Okay, three hundred or four hundred dollars, four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Your life will change. It's not that the people here cannot afford. They can. It is they don't have the access. They don't know who, what, where to do this. If it's here, I have the product here. I got people here, I change the stream. No one will change back. No one says, oh, I don't want to pay that $40. Please, then you change it back to my $1 stream. No one. I'm sure that. Even Bolivia, Peru, those poor countries, no one did that. No one will do it in Australia. But they don't have the access. So that surprises me and make, made me feel that I'm needed here <laughs> in Wolverton too, <laughs> in Australia. I, so, I thought I'd come here to say goodbye after 30 years, and uh, I thought I would come here again in another 30 years. I talked with Bob, I talked with Jeff, they said, okay, let's see each other in another 30 years. It seems that uh, you, you much sooner than that. <laughs> okay, that's uh, all for the talk. Uh, we work on the violins, please. Your yes. first. Amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Very good speaker, isn't he? Does he bring two Well, Arthur's. Arthur's Sorry. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My name's Arthur. Yeah. I'm a good friend of Jeff's, and he <laughs> basically taught me all, all I know. And the other fellow you spoke about before, that excellent violinist, he taught me some stuff as well. Mm. Okay. So let's, let's, let's take a look at your violins, please. It's yeah. another of my precious possessions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, this is like uh, you use uh, a, a knife to uh, a cow knife to ki to kill a, a chicken. Okay. What was say in Chinese? Say you use a cow knife to kill a chicken. So it's overdoing it. Yeah. 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 But uh, but uh, overkill. But as far as it works, you will be fine. No problem. Okay. <laughs> This is the first uh, violin I see because I call it a violin because uh, this is made meant to be a violin uh, by a German factory in during the war I think. Okay, uh, you can very easily see the neck, the way to make it, and here you can easily see the origin of the of the instruments. So if it is a violin. Okay, if it is not a fiddle, and uh, this instrument is actually so far I see not in a very bad condition. Okay, in a acceptable condition. But uh, if you want to know that it should be better, or it should be its original condition, then we must tell the owner the fingerboard is too low it's much too low the fingerboard height from the bottom to the fingerboard top is 21 uh, millimeter let's see 21 millimeters okay i am not an uh, english native so i always miss the s 21 millimeter S. okay now. <laughs> So this one is only 15 or something. No, 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 no. Which, which is millimeter? Well, this, this way is my millimeter. Okay. 17. Not even 17 yet. 
see? So, yeah, this, this is a millimeter, not millimeter, yes. So, this finger board is much too low, much too low. Okay. So, the finger board height from the, the here. But the, the, the interesting thing is that uh, here in Warpton, it's not so wet, it's not so humid. So, if this is humid, I understand. When, the, when you go a while and go to a humid uh, environment, because of the back expanse getting bigger, so the angle of the fingerboard will sink, will go lower. That is the most cases for all violins going to the Philippines, going to Malaysia, going to this area, they all have a very low fingerboard. Why? Because it's, it's going down because of this. Okay. But if it goes to a country like Norway, my country, Norway, okay, and uh, the, the, the humidity level is very low, especially when they use the oven, use the heater inside the room, inside the house. So the air is very dry, below 30 degrees, even 20 degrees. Then the back will shrink, will go smaller, go smaller like this way, it goes smaller. Then when they lift the fingerboard going up, so in Norway, we have like a winter bridge and a summer bridge, <laughs> you know? especially the, the contrabass, the, the bass players, they have two bridges, or they have the adjustable the feet. That changes that much, okay, because there's a living thing. This is a living together with the environment with us. But Australia is not so, so wet, so humid. I don't know why it sinks so much. Of course, as a fiddle, especially you only play for first position, it doesn't matter that much. If you play the first position, then it doesn't matter that much. But if as a classical musician, you have to play high position, then you're, you're in trouble. And also your bow, can you get a bow please? Maybe you don't want the world to see your bow. Like it is a beautiful color. <laughs> so, the, the problem is that if the fingerboard is low, the bridge is also low, okay? And with the bridge low, then the angle is small. You play the angle is very small. So when you play high position and you play on the E string, it's very easy for your bow to damage this place. Many, many people have all this bridge are broken because the angle is not enough, it's too low. And also for the fingers, for high position, if I can play the high position like this, but because the fingerboard is low, I have to go down like this. So those things are very small difference make a huge difference because, for example, in the high position, you know, I play the same place. It's almost like half tone difference. Makes that much difference. So a small difference makes a huge difference for, for the players, for the musician. Um, so as a violin, then I would suggest this, viol this you have to reset the neck. You have to take the neck off and reset it. But of course, no one can do it by yourself, okay? Go to a professional violin maker. And also, it can be very expensive, can be very expensive. So you have to think if it's worth it or not. Uh, maybe if you reset, the, uh, reset the, the, the neck, only if you got this violin from grandmother or grandpa and it's, it's a piece of memory or you know you love this uh, so much that the money cannot buy, then you, you pay. Otherwise, it's much economic to buy anyone actually. So just like uh, physically speaking, this we need to, to reset the neck for the, in the correct angle. There is another way to do this for this particular violin, okay? We are, we are only talking about, this is not a principle. Okay, this is a, for this particular violin, what we can do a cheap way is, because the neck is already too small, very thin. This, this screw, the neck is made by another person and this by another person, two together, it's a factory violin, okay? Then, 
It's too small, it's too thin. If you see the Italian violins today, they have a huge neck. This is too small. So the easiest way is just take the fingerboard out, put a piece of wood in between, and glue them back again. Then, then the fingerboard is high, and then you have more wood, more scrap to, to hold the violin. So, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, answer the phone, answer the phone, please. Hello. So, by, by doing that, uh, it's, it looks very amateur, it looks very amateur, but that is the way. Uh, like a doctor, fix people, you cannot fix an old man according to 20 years old man's uh, condition as a standard. So, okay, your muscle must be like that. You know, it's not. You have to say, fix this particular person's problem, which he can walk, he can do things. So for a video like this, a violin like this, for me, it's, I, I do it in a very, very practical way. Okay, for this particular violin, uh, for this value, for this kind of violin, and for practically people can do. For this job, not even a violin maker, a good carpenter, be able to do this. I think Jeff can do it himself. Just take it off, put another piece of wood. What wood is good? If you can find a maple, fine. If you cannot find a maple, find a piece of hardwood, not so heavy, light hardwood, which is not easy to change shape. Okay, because if it's too hard, like empony is too heavy. If it's uh, like a willow, it's too soft. Okay, you must have a certain uh, density of the wood, uh, similar to maple, and uh, just put a piece and uh, glue them to see, match this height, is 21 and also you can make a little angle you don't have to be this piece of wood to be uh, from beginning to end the same same thicknesses you can make it thinner on the top and a little little bigger on this side make it the angle then this video will be playable will be playable and and it also is very easy to remove it if you want to or in the future if uh, uh, someone's son or your daughter became a good violin maker, they want to crack the whole thing, you can do it. Or yourself, you want to become a violin maker. You can redo it. You can take the fingerboard off and take the whole thing off and reset the chair, the, 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 the neck. You will not damage the violin yourself. So that's the best solution, I think, for this violin. Okay? For the bridge, uh, it's not a, a uh, professionally made, but uh, but it's okay, it's okay. This this uh, the bridge is uh, it's a little too thin for me, but uh, acceptable. It's it's acceptable. It's uh, it's usable. Uh, the shape is also also almost correct. Okay, very close to perfect. <laughs> this this uh, this arch, because I see so many uh, you know uh, string instrument they have a very funny arch. And uh, also the string lengths between each other also acceptable, also very nice. Okay. Only thing, if you see clearly, if you see, you have to see the lens uh, from here to here and here to here. If it's even, this is not even. Okay. You leave more on this side and less on this side. If you if you can see, put it close. You're going between the end of the fingerboard and the bridge. Yeah, you, right? see, you can see from this side to here and this side to here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you can yeah, you yeah, can yeah. see it very, very easily to see. Okay. So I can just have a look at that. I often look at this side and I can see immediately that's much too low just mm. without measuring it. And mm -hmm. and I see a lot of fiddles like that. Mm. Too low. Mm. Too too low. Yeah. yeah. So the the solution. Uh, the, 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 the problem is that uh, I cannot uh, say it as a universal rule because every fiddle, every instrument is different. For other things, if they have already have a very thick neck, you cannot do this. Then the neck will be too thick for people to hold. It's only if you're lucky to have a violin like this, have a very thin, very small neck, then it's okay to plus two millimeters or a, li a little something in between, we make an angle, the, they make the angle higher, yeah. okay? Then you also be able to hold it comfortably, and plus, it will not damage the violin. You can always move them back. 
You can always take it off and do it again. Using an animal glue. Use animal glue, yes. Use hide glue. We call it hide glue. Hide glue. Yes, hide glue, yes. Hide glue. Hide glue. Yeah, double boiler, double boiler. Double. Okay. Now, ne never, 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 never use chemical glue. <laughs> okay. Bound to something. Uh, house glue on the violin. Because uh, an epoxy or a super glue, all those things you don't use. Because that will damage your instruments. Hide glue, you can always take it off by, uh, by heat and uh, moisture, by water. Okay, can always remove, no problem. And also, hide glue is very brittle. If you use a little bit of force, you will pop up yourself, mm. mostly. Very brittle, this hide glue. When it's dry, it's like crystal. So I can open the violin from here without uh, any heat or water. I can I have an open knife. I can just open like this. It's it's open like you know, like that. It's like a glass. So hide glue is a glue we should use for 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 violins. Okay, and uh, for the strings, of course, can be improved. Okay, this string they if they change uh, Daniel Silver strings. Okay, forty four dollars US dollars. Maybe like fifty dollars, uh, you change your life. Why not? And for 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 me, the sun post is uh, a little bit uh, too close to the bridge. The problem is that the owner is not here. I cannot work with him. So if he's here, we can do it together. I will move the sun post. He will play until where he likes. Since the owner is not here, I cannot do that. If I do, I do this, he may be very happy. Wow! He may be very sad. Daniel, I pay your airplane ticket. Come back again. <laughs> we too much trouble. So this is the violin, the first I see, and uh, I give this my of my uh, opinion. And uh, I don't know how the packs work, and uh, but uh, he uses four tuners. Normally we don't, as a violin, if it's violin, we don't use four tuners. Because the, they change the length of the string, of the condition. So it's uh, completely uh, how can, acoustically wrong for that. But for fiddle, doesn't matter. Fiddle doesn't matter. But it's, it's only if you, you want to say, okay, I play fiddle, but I still want the science. I still want to have a violin sound, the, the resonance. Because violin, fiddle, the sound, to me, the violin has all this, uh, you know, acoustic uh, theory, you know, how, how, how dense this is, and uh, uh, the overtone theory, and how you play this one, and this will uh, vibrate too, for certain, you know, overtone, have all those, uh, you know, very complicated things, that that's which I studied. And if you talk to people, most people don't understand. It's very good to fool people if you talk about the science, you know, I'm very good at it, but don't, I don't use it, <laughs> I don't use it to, to fool people. Um, but for fiddle, the fiddle sound itself is not a violin sound. It fiddle sound is uh, much more closer to you. It's more personal sound. It's like a string sound. More string sound less resonance. So maybe for fiddle, this is okay. This is why I want to ask the fiddle players if this is this sound you want. So this is what I mentioned in the very beginning that I want to learn from them. I wanted to know what kind of sound they want. If the player is here. I tune them to a violin sound if they like it or not. Maybe they don't like. If you if the violin sound, the resonant, very good big sound is oh no 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 no, but this is too far away from my feeling. I want this kind of uh, uh, intimacy. You know, I feel like I play just uh, very close to my ear. I need to find out from them, not myself. Okay, this is the first violin I'm talking about. Give me the signal, please. Next one is yours. Is left handed.